Happy Easter. Um, yeah, you're all very welcome this morning on this Easter Sunday. Um, every Sunday we celebrate Jesus alive from the dead, but this is a specific Sunday in the Christian calendar through the year, which we really um, think about it in a significant way. So whether this is where you come every Sunday, this is your church family, or if you're a guest here with us this morning, um, yeah, happy Easter. Happy Easter to you all. Um, Easter Day, we've had a... Um, uh, kids club through the week is not right some of you are here some of you will come down in a little while pyramid rock and this is our grand finale our big send off and it dovetails well in with our easter day so if you're here today for the very first time on this sunday you're especially welcome don't rush away unless you have to and please stay for some refreshments in the halls complex at the top of the avenue um allow me now to lead you in a prayer so let's pray together God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church then with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're going to sing two hymns now. Come, people of the risen King, and thine be the glory. And if you're able to do so, please stand up ready to sing when the music starts. before we sing thine be the glory here um, I witness account of that first Easter day on the first day of the week very early in the morning 
the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Thine be the glory. please sit down. And so in the back of those great words of our singing hymns this morning and of hearing God's word read, um, allow me to lead you in prayer as we now talk to God. So let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we do not look for the living among the dead, not because a body was stolen, neither was a body resuscitated following a fainting fit, and certainly not because a dead Jesus is somehow kept alive in our memories No, we do not look for the living among the dead because there's been a resurrection. It's the only reasonable and rational and logical way to make sense of the empty tomb. We thank you for the empty tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ, how it shows us your character. The empty tomb persuades us of who you are and what you're like. You are faithful. From the time of our first relative's disobedience, You promised that you would crush wrong once and for all. For thousands of years, you neither forgot nor turned away from your promise. You didn't grow tired, neither were you distracted. Sovereign over the events of history, when the time was just right, you sent your son Jesus Christ to come and fulfill what had been promised, defeating sin and death by his crucifixion and resurrection. The empty tomb shows that you are powerful, O God. 
There's no more pointed demonstration of power than to have power over death. By your awesome power, Jesus took off his grave clothes and walked out of the tomb. And thank you too that the empty tomb reveals your willingness. You went to such an extent to rescue us. Your willingness was not motivated by what you saw in us, but by what is inside of you. You're willing because you are the definition of mercy. You're willing because you are the source of love. You're willing because you're full of amazing grace. You're willing because you're good and gentle and patient and kind. And so we marvel afresh at the words of the angels to the women. He is not here. He is risen. And so as we seek Jesus, we know we won't find him in a tomb or in a graveyard or on an archaeological dig. Today he has risen again from the grave and can be known by each and every one of us through his spirit. So then may he who walked out of the tomb, who lives now with an indestructible life, walk off the pages of the Bible and into our lives, transforming us in the process. And so in and through your faithful, powerful and willing name we pray. Amen. Well, the choir are going to lead us in in two pieces, um, King of Kings and Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.
thank you, thank you. Um, this week, yeah, has been Pyramid Rock. Last Sunday morning, we learned our theme song, those who were here last Sunday and haven't seen it since last Sunday, but some of us have been together. I don't know whether some of those who are maybe sitting elsewhere this morning want to head to the front now as we share with what we've been doing at Pyramid Rock. Uh, if anybody upstairs or a little bit further, come forward. But um, Pyramid Rock song, we've done that this week. Will we sing it now together now? Yeah, we will. So let's all stand up. Uh, please stand up with us. Um, are there, action, there are actions, and I'll um, follow me, apparently. Right, here we go. Okay, we're going to get some time. For school work, we are born. Easter school break, we are born. We're looking for some place to go where we can be. Here is where the fun begins. There is two Bible sentences, um, and uh, we want to teach you what we've learnt this week, um, and let me see, come do the first one, okay, so if you bring up the Acts words on the screen, there we go, isn't that right, you coming to rap then, yeah, yeah, we, we did this yesterday and they all joined, yeah, we did, we, we'll remember, okay. All oh, right, who's going to, Rachel, you're going to play the beat? Okay, here we go. There we go. Yeah, repeat after her. Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. Sold him as a slave to be taken to Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him. From all his troubles at seven, nine, and ten. From all his troubles at seven, nine, and ten. Hey, very good. Now I was thinking, what about those who are at Pyramid Rock did the bit with you, you know, and then everybody else echoed. Would that work, yeah? You all okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. So, Pyramid Rock people with us. And everybody else echo. Joseph's brother. 
brothers were jealous of him. Sold him as a slave to be taken to Egypt. God was with him and rescued him. Thank you. So yeah, that's a key point in the in the story. Um, whatever Joseph was going through, God was with him, and God rescued him ultimately out of all his troubles. Now um, we have a pyramid here. I don't know whether you can see this. And this was a rather oh, might need to be at night. Yeah, there's actions of this one, and does it need to be built up? Built up a bit? No, have we still got a? I need to do something. Uh, you come and help me. And maybe the, the, these new permanent rock can help as well. Right, Karis, get up. Oh, that was. There we go. We were building pyramids because we were in Egypt, weren't we? Yeah, it was very, very hot. It was very, very hot. I don't know whether anybody's going to cool us down. Hopefully not. <laughs> what about that? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. That look good. Are the actions people? Yeah. Right, come do the actions here. Okay, here we go. Do we just go? Here we go. Intended to harm me, me but God intended it good. To accomplish what is still being done, the saving of many lives. And this is chapter 50, verse that sounded good, yeah. Um, do you think the rest of us can join into this, yeah? Is it easy doing actions when you're sitting down? It really isn't. I do think everybody needs to stand up so that you can really, really get going with it, okay? Right. You intended to harm me, but God intended for good. What is now being done, the saving of many lives. Genesis chapter 20, verse 20. Hey, thank you. Great. So that's what we're getting. You know, sit down. Um, do any of you want to try and say one of them um, on your own? Or is that really hard? And it's sitting there and it slows. Anna, do you want to give it a go? Do you think you do without looking at it? two um, verses, these two sentences from the Bible as we were thinking about the life of Joseph. Um, but there's one greater than Joseph, um, Jesus, of course, and there's echoes in Joseph's story, in Jesus' story, which we'll talk about in a, in a second. Now, there was somebody missing. There was somebody we missed yesterday, isn't that right? At Pyramid Rock, they were with us. They were with us all week, um, but what wasn't there yesterday. We don't know where he went. Do you remember that? you remember Silly McSilly had to take his place? <coughs> Who was it? Who did we miss? Dr. Polly. Yeah. Oh, we find them. We find them. Where were you yesterday? We missed you. We got some eating. <laughs> I was your stuck place. in a pit and I fell asleep and it wasn't a good time. It wasn't good at all. We, we, did we miss him yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Um, look, you, you did miss yesterday. Now, of Silly McSilly, he did a sterling job in the midst of all his silliness. But we got the relic. We got the relic well, with uh, right. the, missing onion, the missing onion, the missing onion shaped piece. Wow. Okay, we did, and obviously we've done um, post on Pete with his smelly feet out of a job. I don't see him. Oh, he's sitting there. If there's a bad smell down there, there's a postman. It smell. Stand up and identify yourself, postman Pete, with a smelly feet. Okay. <laughs> there's, um, yeah. You, you, sorry about that if you're down there. Um, Okay, so this, yeah, we find the missing relic piece, so you're glad, so, yes. and machine's still working, what's your next, what's your next project, where are you off tonight? Well, I actually need to show Denise something. Denise! 
Denise. I just want to make clear that I just heard that for the first time. Okay. I, I, I thought your machine was maybe a bit faulty there. Right. I find quiz questions. You found quiz questions. And I also find a scoreboard. Okay. Because we're going to mummify some people. Maybe sitting in this side. Some people I thought we could mummify are getting out of their mummification because they're holding tiny babies and children. Um, isn't that right, Andrew and Ben? But Chris isn't. Chris isn't holding anybody. Great. There you go. Come on over and we mummify you. Okay. And we could do Tom. Come on over, Tom. Right, okay. All right, so if you stay on this side, so you can be this side, so we'll just divide the church down the middle. Everybody on this side and upstairs on this side, and same on this side, okay? So if you go to this side. Um, and really, we've got questions for each side, and you have five seconds, okay, to mummify. I'll tell you what, I could, I could start this. Put your foot on this. That's it. And then we can get started a bit. And Finn, do you want to do that side? Oh no, if this is not ready. We'll put your foot in that again. I'll tell you what, I'll just leave it. We'll just leave it there and then um, and you can hold up, right? So um, so we'll see how, how much we can mummify them. So we'll do this side first, okay. Okay. Your question. What clothing did Joseph's dad give him? What clothing did Joseph's dad give him this side? Yeah, I'm going to put right. Harry, come on up and grab this. And you're five. Uh, this is not. This might be extra long, but it's not very extra strong. Okay. Right. So Tom, if you're not, yeah. There we go. So we'll do do five seconds. Very slow seconds. Okay. Well, we need to keep moving. So um, this is not. Is this? Okay. Five, four, three, two. One. Right, okay, leave that down. That was great. Okay, next question. Side now. What was Joseph's dad called? What was Joseph's dad called? Jacob. Right, come on up. Okay. There we go. <laughs> it's not cheating, but, it, but this is generally, that's what you have to aim for. Okay, so... Five, four, three, two, one. All right, okay. No, it's all good. You hold that there. Anna, well done. Right, next question. This side now. What country was Joseph taken to? What country was Joseph taken to, right? Egypt. Very good. Yes. Right, okay, where are we? Okay, I'll unravel it a bit here, okay. There we go, right. See if you can walk around. Five, four, three, two, one. Well done, right, okay. Tom, you can maybe start holding that. Okay, well, it's sort of falling off. Hold this here. There we go. Right, next question. This side. Oh, this side. Let's ask some people further than the permit rocky kind of people at that. Right, okay. Who brought Joseph as a slave? Who bought Joseph as a slave? Anybody back there, upstairs? No. What side are we on? This side. This side. Anybody know the story? No, anybody back there? Nobody knows. <laughs> Hugh, do you know the answer? Who bought? Who bought Joseph as a slave in Egypt? Potiphar. That sounds right. Very good. Hugh, do you, or do you want? Do you want to come up, Hugh? Okay, here we go. 
All right. Do you get Let me start here. All right. You will engineer this, I know, in a, a way that will win this. Oh, yes. In five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. That'll do. That is great. Very good. Put this under your arm for the time being. Thank you, Hugh. Right this side. What did Pharaoh's dream about the cows and the corn mean? Okay, anybody on this side? Oh, there's somebody with a hand up there. There's Ellie. What did it mean? <laughs> or Bethany, sorry. <sighs> Feast and fat. Yeah, well done. Do you want to come up? Great, okay. Unless you want to get your mum and dad to come up. No, are they? They're comfortable enough, are they? Right, okay. Right, tell them up. Right, you hold that. And we'll go, sh go five around this way. Let's see. Right. Take it that way. There we go. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. Stick it under your arm there. Well done. Definitely. Okay. Right. Next one. We'll do the last two, the last two questions. One each. Where did we start? This side first, did we? It's this side. Now. Right. Who told Joseph the meaning of the dreams? Who told Joseph the meaning of the dreams? Oh, that is right. Come on ahead. Where did we switch? Which team did we start with? On that side. Okay, one last question each. Number nine and ten. Okay, five, four, three. Oh, very good. Two, one. You are. Oh, that is fantastic. That is good. Right, last question then. This side. This is your last question, guys. How many family members travelled to Egypt with Jacob? How many family members travelled to... Remember from yesterday, was it yesterday's story? <coughs> yeah, very good, well done. Right, okay. Right, you think you're tall enough to reach up there? Oh, that's the wrong one, sorry. Okay, what side is it? Yep, there we go. Right, five, four, three... Two, one. Oh, brilliant. Very good. And this last question here. Last question this side. Okay. What did Joseph's brothers worry about after Jacob had died? What did Joseph's brothers worry about after their dad had died? Anna? That's right, they would be. But do you, have you already come up? Do you want to choose someone who hasn't been up on the back of you? you do it, your, your brother, Ben. That is a great choice. Right, come on ahead, Ben. Is this, a, is this where we, right, okay. Right, Ben, let's see. Here we go. You take that, and I'll take this, and stick it up, stick it in there. Right, let's see, here we go. Right, five, four, three, two, one. Very good, well done. Right, who do you think looks more mummified, this side or this side? Okay, tell you what, we'll ask the clerk of session who maybe won. <laughs> Harry Latimer, who do you think is more mummified or might it be a draw? Oh, the figure, point this way, well done. Right, grab a seat. <laughs> Very good. Bye-bye. Okay, well, we'll sing two songs now that we've sung at Pyramid Rock. Um, Our God is a great big God, I think. And then Super Saviour. So let's all stand up and we'll sing that. And those who are up for helping with actions at the front, if you can come and help me. Okay, we'll all stand up and sing. And we'll do the actions together. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hand. He's higher than the submarine, and deeper than the ocean. He's wider than the universe, and He holds my wildest dreams. Cause He's lonely and He's lovely Since before the world began How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God And He holds us in His hands And He holds us in His hands And He holds us in His hands Okay, super
super savior. Who can save the day? Take our sins away. Who can rescue us with mighty power? Super savior to the rescue. Super savior, mighty to save. Oh, look, look. Here comes Jesus up and up and out of the grave. He's the death crusher, death crusher, sin smasher, sin smasher. Who's the mighty super savior, Jesus? Who can save the day, take our sins away? Who can rescue us? To the rescue, super savior, mighty to save. Oh, look, look, here comes Jesus up and up and out of the grave. He's the death crusher, death crusher, sin smasher, sin smasher. Who's the mighty super savior, Jesus? Okay, good singing. All set down. Okay, the last quiz question um, asked about Joseph's brothers and how they were really worried. Who answered that question? Was Anna? Do you remember they thought that um, Joseph, after Jacob had died, would have a grudge against them? Isn't that right? Um, but here's the words that Joseph said. And they'll come up on the screen. Oh, I think we know them, don't we? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And I'll tell you what he went on to say next. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them, and spoke kindly to them. There is one greater than Joseph, and it's Jesus. And Joseph's story finds a greater echo in Jesus' story, not least what we celebrate today, on Easter Day. And one of Jesus' close friends, Peter, not long, not very long after Jesus rose from the dead, had an opportunity to speak to a large crowd about what had just happened with Jesus, who they saw crucified. And his words are going to come on the screen. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. That sounds a little bit like Joseph's words. You intended it for good, but God meant it for good, even the saving of many lives. And today we celebrate the fact of Jesus' resurrection, that death was no match for Jesus, and the saving of many lives are accomplished. The saving of many lives are accomplished through it. I want you to help me today when we see things on the screen. I want to tell you three reasons why Jesus' resurrection is really important. And those who are a little bit younger, listen in, and those who are a little bit older, um, if you listen in too as well. But here's the first thing on the screen. What does the resurrection show us? That what? That Jesus is God. At some point along life's journey, everyone will ask the question, is there a God? Are human beings supreme in the universe, or is there something greater, or does someone transcend human, human life as we know and experience it? The resurrection is the greatest proof that there's a God who came into the world in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus made the remarkable claim to be eternal. Yes, we are born to live, but Jesus said he lived before he was born. But the greatest claim was that he was God. In the Gospels, you can read these claims. 
Jesus made the credibility of these claims depend upon his resurrection. The resurrection is the great proof that these claims are true. It validates them. Jesus is eternal, sinless, and none other than God himself. God has landed in this world in the form of Jesus. And the greatest proof of all this is that he rose again from the dead on the third day. The resurrection shows that Jesus is God. Here's the second thing. The resurrection means what? Forgiveness is available. Forgiveness is available. And this was really um, came out in Joseph's story. Remember how his brothers thought, oh, Joseph's going to be mad with us now. But Joseph basically said, I forgive you. It's okay. Forgiveness is still there. And he assured them by speaking kindly to them, it's, I, I, I do forgive you. Because God has impacted my life in such a way. The Bible teaches us that the resurrection means that forgiveness is available. The Bible teaches that sin is wrongdoing. We can do wrong to ourselves, to others, and above all to God. Everyone has a standard of right or wrong. Some of us have higher standards than others. But the standard is still there. And if we're honest with ourselves, each of us has fallen short of our own standards. What about God's standards then? Love God perfectly with all your heart energy and your neighbor as yourself. Uh, we leave undone those things we ought to have done and, and do things that we ought not to do. How, can, how then can we obtain the forgiveness of our sins? Is forgiveness necessary? Well, yes, look at Jesus on the cross. His blood shed for us is the promise of God's love to the sinner. Is forgiveness possible? Yeah, look at Jesus on the cross. God didn't, um, the, the curse of sin is clearly seen. Is forgiveness just? Yes, look at Jesus on the cross. God didn't make light of sin. Rather, the judge was judged in our place to transform us by his grace. Is forgiveness available? Was the death of Jesus sufficient to take away our sin? The resurrection answers yes. The resurrection is like a receipt that you are given when you pay a debt. The receipt doesn't pay the debt. It's evidence that the debt has been paid. In the same way, when Jesus died on the cross, he paid the debt of sin. The punishment that should have been ours fell on him. The resurrection on the third day is God's great receipt and proof to us that the debt of sin has been paid. So forgiveness is available. The resurrection which we celebrate today proves that Jesus is God. It tells us that forgiveness is available to us. And here's the last thing. The resurrection gives us what? Hope in the face of death. The resurrection gives us hope in the, faith of de in the face of death. God's not scared to talk about death as sometimes we are. But do we really need to be reminded of its certainty, unpredictability, and ultimacy? Everything that people hold dear, whether genius or love or wealth or power, is utterly bankrupt in its presence. Shakespeare, in Hamlet, tells us about the undiscovered country from which who's born no traveler returns. But Shakespeare was wrong. If Jesus rose from the dead, then someone has returned. He has come back from death itself. And C.S. Lewis said this, Jesus has forced open a door that has been locked since the death of the first man. He has met, fought, and beaten the king of death. Everything is different because he has done so. This is the beginning of the new creation. A new chapter in cosmic history has opened. Death is not the end. Jesus rose from the dead. There is hope. Joseph said to his brothers, so then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. There is, of course, one greater than Joseph, Jesus, who in the first Easter day said to his disciples, Peace be with you. Don't be afraid. In his death and resurrection, Jesus provides for his followers and friends. Reassurances that he is God, that he forgives, that there's hope in the fear of face of death. If you're here today and you're not yet a Christian believer, will you hear Jesus speaking kindly to you? 
He has kind words for you that are in direct contrast and contradiction to the expectations of our culture, even to the way you might deal harshly with yourself. You can be very hard on yourself. Be your own God. You do you. And don't let anyone tell you what to do. That's quite a weight. Ignore the guilt you feel. That's quite a weight. Do your best and hope for the best, not least in the face of death. That's quite a weight. Well, listen, Jesus is alive today. And when you take him to heart, you will find him to be the God who in kindness and mercy relieves you of that weight from playing God, from being weighed down with guilt, from facing death without the certainty of the forever life, for the after forever life. The resurrection gives you hope in the face of death. The resurrection means forgiveness is available. The resurrection proves that that Jesus is God. God has spoke kindly to us and reassuringly to us. And if you're a Christian believer today, take these words, take Jesus to heart afresh. Or maybe if you're not yet a Christian believer, um, take Jesus to heart for the first time as God speaks kindly to you through his death and resurrection. Pyramid Rock then finishes today. Let's watch a video of all that we've been up to this week.
Okay, did you look as a way to good week? Yeah. So thank you for coming along to Pyramid Rock. And um, thank you who um, are sitting around us um, for your support this week. Not least if you sent some of these kids along. Not least if you're not part of our church family here. If you don't connect with any church family, um, always feel free to come back. And um, We meet every Sunday at half ten in the morning, half six in the evening time. And there's activities for um, kids through the week. So look, if you want to find more about what we do for young people in the life of the church, um, do, do speak with me. Well, look, thank you so much for Pyramid Rock this week. Well, this is something now, um, as we're going to sing, this is something to, now that church family do, and it's bringing offerings, part of our worship on a Sunday morning. Um, so look, it's not something we expect of any of our guests here. Um, so look, um, in a minute, those who will bring around baskets, um, just pass it on. If you haven't come, re- come prepared to give, don't be embarrassed, okay? So um, we're all going to stand up then as we do that, and we're going to sing um, How Great the Chasm, um, a song about living hope.
Well, please remain standing when I pray, and then we'll sing again. Father God, as we celebrate about, again your victory over death and triumph over evil in Jesus Christ, your Son, open our hearts today through the gospel to the way you were able to change our lives in transforming power through your Spirit. Resurrection power bringing hope out of despair, joy out of sorrow, peace out of trauma, love out of hatred, and in faith may we live now and trust for the future, assured that nothing can defeat your purpose or deny the life you offer for all eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose awesome, powerful, and victorious name we pray. Amen. Well, we'll sing in a moment. See, what a morning. Some of you who are a little bit younger got one of these books yesterday. If you weren't here yesterday, pick up this book. For those um, at church who weren't at Pyramid Rock, who are a little bit younger, um, um, please get this book, okay? It's called The Friends and the Traveler, all right? Um, maybe some of you are here have grandchildren. Maybe look, there are plenty of these books. If you think it's something you'd like to give um, to your grandchildren, even as a gift from our church here, um, come and see me after and get one too, okay? Right, see what a morning, gloriously bright.
Well, be blessed as you hear these Bible words as you go on your way this Easter day. May the God of peace, who raised to life the great shepherd of the sheep, make us ready to do his will in every good thing through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Well, let's bless each other in the words of the grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.